Welcome back to another episode of RNT Fitness Radio. Today I'm joined by the owner of Time Zillionaire, Matt Sandrini, who's an expert in helping you do more in less time, focus on what's important, and take everything in your life to the next level. We talk about how to get out of living the 25-hour day life, uh, which is something I know I've been guilty of over the years. Become clear on your one thing and the best productivity tips that works with his most successful clients. One of the best takeaways from this podcast uh, was the idea of an accountability letter. It's something I haven't heard of before, and it's worth listening to this podcast just for this golden nugget alone. We also dive deep into journaling, scientific advancements in meditation, and how to continue working efficiently when traveling the world. If you always feel like you're short on time, you need to make sure you listen to this episode. How's your week been? Yeah, good. Very good. Very good, actually. I was uh, on a call with a client just a few minutes ago. I had a great, it was a great session, yeah, and he's like doing something really cool very soon, so I'm looking forward to that. And um, it's been a good week. It's been a good week. My, my weeks in 2019 are even more intense than in 2018, in a good way. In what sense? Uh, um, yeah, in what sense? Um, I, I, I'm a big believer that if you go all in in life, you get like a lot of people try to manage their energy or manage you know balance seek balance but to me it's like if you go all in in all things in your life then they will support each other you will have more energy you will find more time in a way okay and so um so you yeah i, I do like i meet more people go more personal and business meetings and do more podcasts and uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's good though. I do more things. Like I meditate five, six hours every week. Um, it's, and I, I really enjoy to do all that. Like go all in, in all the things I choose to do. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's an important clarification there, right? In, in that you're going all in, in Absolutely. what you choose to do. So that, that makes me ask you uh, straight off the bat, how do people, how do people get clarity on what they should be choosing to focus their time on? Because I know for myself and a lot of people around me, it's so easy to get overwhelmed with all the different opportunities, the different, you know, invitations that you get, all the the different tasks that you might want to try or the, you know, the new tactics or whatever. So how do you get clarity on, on what you should be choosing on? Yeah. Yeah. Well, to me, it's two, two ways. So one, you got to know where you're going, right? There's a great quote I like, sadly is uh, by the Cheshire cat, but <laughs> it's still a great quote. And it says, if you don't know where you're going, every road will take you there, right? And so without that clarity, without knowing what you want to accomplish, you you know, anything will do. And so you'll say yes to to everything. And, you know, a, a lot of people don't feel that they don't have that crystal clear clarity or as to, you know, what their direction is, what the next goal is, because it's difficult. You have to choose, but sometimes they just choose and go, go towards one direction, which could be, you know, I want to increase my, my fitness. I want to get all in in my fitness. or I want to build a great business or whatever. When you do that and you focus on getting results, then you see results in other areas of your life because of that passion that, you know, that transpires. So I think having that, that direction is one thing. And then I think it's also important to know when to say yes and when to say no. Mm-hmm. So when you're experimenting and trying to understand what you want to accomplish, how to accomplish it, you know, you're either looking for a direction or a tactic to get there. I believe it's important to say many yeses, try many things, see many people, see what sticks. But once you then find something that resonates with you and that works with your direction, then it's time to just say no to everything else and just just commit to that until you do it. And that will give you disproportionate results in many areas of your life. Can you give us an example in your own life? Yeah, of the yes or no? Yeah, how you've managed to uh, find something that resonates with you, which you clearly have, and, and how you use that now to say no to everything else. Yeah. So to me, a major shift was when I, uh, so there was a moment in my life where I felt pretty stuck. So I had, uh, uh, I'd left the, the corporate job um, and uh, I started my first business, which did well, but then went through a lot of challenges, both in terms of a business partner and, and I, like at the time, um, wanted slightly different things. And then the business itself was going through a tough patch and I was like, okay, I want to do something else. But in that moment, I was very concerned with the day-to-day sort of the short term and it's when I was like okay look let's think ahead what do I want to do three years from now is when I change that thinking from right now kind of survival mode or day-to-day to like what do I want to build what do I want to you know what do I want to create that is of value and in a way it's that understanding that my conditions today were not made today therefore I have no control over 
where I wake up today, how I feel today, or very little control anyway, who my friends are today, right? But I have a lot of control over who my friends will be a year from now, what my physical shape will be a year from now, how will I wake up, where will I wake up a year from now? So when I shifted to like the future, that's when I actually was able to have that runway to have that space to make stuff happen. And a great exercise to do this is I, you know, I like to, to tell people to look back, look back three, five years in the past. Who were you then? What was life? You know, who are the people around you? What was life like? And very often life is very, very different. Whether you, whether it was intentional or not, things changed quite a lot. And that shows you, wow, in three to five years, things can really change whether I want to or not. So imagine being intentional that means that, you know, when you look ahead and you look at three to five years from now, you don't have the shackles of the present. You can make so much happen. And so whenever you do something new, something that is for the long term, you are, again, you are free to um, think bigger just because if you want to make stuff happen today or next week, you have to deal with the constraints of the present. You can't build on many steps. There's a quote that I really like, and it's something like, uh, you, everyone overestimates how much they can achieve in a week or month or year, but they underestimate how much they can achieve in five to 10 years. And yes, you know, when I hear, when I heard that it really resonated because it points back to just what you said there. And, you know, if you look back three to five years uh, in my life specifically, it it was so different. You know, I was on the gym floor from 6am to to 9am every day. um, And life now is completely different, but it's, it's hard to, it's sometimes it's easy to forget that. And yeah, but at the same time, you know, you mentioned that, you know, people need to come out of the present and look towards the future. How do you prevent the overwhelm of the future? And, you know, that anxiety that it can sometimes bring in that, that you're like, well, which direction do I focus on? And, and like, there's so many things to do. How do we gain mm-hmm. more clarity towards that? Because I know you've mentioned, you know, it's important to take time to think about what you want, but you know, what is the process behind that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that two important things here is that many people look at um, they, you know, if they if they're overwhelmed, they say I'm juggling too much, and that's a way of thinking that like the different areas in life are in competition for your life and resources. Therefore, you have to juggle them. You know, when you deal with one, an- another one is up in the air, and the problem is when you juggle too much. You know, one of the one of the balls is going to fall to the floor, and the game ends, right? And then that's when 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 people really juggle too much, then what happens is burnout or maybe mm. uh, feeling really overwhelmed, right? When you look at life as a system, as just a sphere, then what happens is that if you increase your business, then what happens is you are more passionate, more fulfilled. Maybe you have more resources you can put into your social life. When you have great friends around you that support you then suddenly it's easier to have healthy habits and an exercise, eat well. When you do that, you're going to feel amazing and have more energy. You can put that into your business and so on and so forth. So looking at life as a system, as a sphere, not as like different bits that are in competition and, you know, growing that sphere instead of looking for, um, for balancing those things as if they were in competition for your resources is an important mindset shift. And then um, one thing that I... I would say also is that when you um, when you want to focus on many things at once, always look for the domino effect. So there will be whether it's in business or in in overall life, there'll be one thing that if you achieve, everything else will either be a byproduct or incredibly easier. So I don't know. Like for example, for some people, it could be if they double their business, then suddenly their capital or the amount that they're able to to pay themselves is much, much higher and have more resources to invest in their their private life and their troubles or, or whatever. But if you're at a different stage in your business, doubling it will not make that much of a difference, but maybe looking after your 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 performance is the domino that will change everything and enable um, that business growth as well. So to me, it's like aligning those things is very important. Yeah, there's a couple of things there in that. The first thing you mentioned where, you know, it's a sphere is, is, is really important and one thing I was struggling with last year was the concept of fulfillment. And one uh, definition I really liked in the end, uh, not in the end, but you know, ultimately was um, one from a guy called Mike DeSanti who we had on the podcast previously. And he said that you know, in each domain in your life that you have, the best thing to do is rather than blasting on one only is to inch it up you know, each at a time. And it's exactly what you said there in a different sort of concept or uh, way of explaining in that it should be spherical. 
and you know they should all feed off yeah. each other and, and they should rise together yeah and and growth is contagious you know when you uh you grow in one area by you have to grow in other areas and uh, because otherwise you won't be able to cope with the the different thinking the different work and it's the same in your social sphere if you grow a lot the people around you are close to you will grow or they won't be able to um sort of have you in their social sphere yeah that's exactly why i talk about the um the physical body transformation as as a vehicle to improving other areas of your life because i feel for many people when they when they focus on themselves and they, they go through the process of getting to shape, it carries over into so many different areas of their lives. Yeah, I think that going to to the gym or working out or training, it's a great um, well, it's a great gym to learn how growth works mm-hmm. in life because you show up every day or you show up most days, and you put in the work, you put in the hard work, and you get nothing but pain. Right, <laughs> you go home and you're in pain, and your muscles haven't grown; they're the same but you're in pain. And then you look back, you know, a few weeks later, a few months later, and you're like, okay, I can see some change now. I can see what happened, but you can't, there's no, there's no direct link between you going to the gym and you getting better. And it's the same in everything that matters in life. You have to show up, go through the pain and believe that by keep showing up, you will get those results. And then you look back and you finally see them. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, Does yeah, that yeah. I've always thought that the gym is everything you do in the gym and training is, is a metaphor for life. You know, yeah. you know, progressive overload where you're trying to make improvements each each yeah. session. It, it carries over into all areas of life. Um, so why don't we um, step back a bit and tell the listeners who Matt Sandrini is and how do I become a time zillionaire? <laughs> yeah. So first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Um, so I run timezillionaire.com. That's where where you can find me. Uh, where I have a. a a community of, of readers online and then a coach business owners around the world on uh, how to be effective um, with their time. And, um, and and really because of work with business owners, how to scale their business in an effective and faster way that will also grow their lifestyle. You know, very often there's a compromise between business and a lifestyle because a lot of people think like I'll get a business and then everything I'll sort everything out later. But the reality is, once you have the complexity of, of, of a business around you, it is a lot more difficult to then reshape everything around your team, your clients, your business model. So it's a lot easier if you do that as early as possible as, uh, as you grow. Um, so that's a little bit about me. And the concept behind Time Zillionaire is that really um, we all have the same amount of time or at least we can all expect the same amount of time. You know, when, uh, when we were born, life expectancy around the world is just over 70 years uh, in the Western world is a, a little bit higher than that, but um, that gives us about 60 million, me- 60 million minutes um, for our lifespan, right? So you could say we're all millionaires in terms of time. However, uh, not everyone has the same life in terms of enjoyment, in terms of how much you know you can do with their life, in terms of the quality. And so if quantity is pretty much the same for everyone, the only things that change is, is the value of that time. And that's, you know, that's the meaning behind being time rich or being a time zillionaire is kind of it's compressing multiple lives into one and make sure that you know you are really intentional you are really efficient and instead of trying to uh give intrinsic value to that time and just expect for things to happen just through those 24 hours you actually are being intentional and be very efficient to find the best way to extract and and squeeze out as much value as you can out of those 24 hours in every aspect of your life so matt have you always been a productive guy well, um, I think I've always, uh, I've always liked systems. Um, so creating ways that support my work, um, both in terms of like, um, the thinking and, and, and not having to plan everything from scratch or think everything from scratch, you know, I like systems that support me. Um, they're like rails, you know, through, throughout the day, but I gotta say, you know, I, um, one quote I, I really liked from from you um, on, on your on your bio was like to take other people to an extreme. You have to go through the extreme yourself. And yeah. <laughs> I feel that I, I definitely lived that in that um, during my my well after university, I went. I was in a corporate in a corporate job, very corporate, I would say. And and at that point, you know, everything was um, incredibly structured, but not in an efficient way. And, and because I was working away from home uh, four to five days of the week, um, I 
wanted to make everything incredibly efficient for myself, you know, to be able to take time off when I was uh, working from home, especially on Friday when I had the Friday working from home. I didn't want to work because the other days I was away. So I, I created a lot of systems and then optimized all my work, you know, that, so that my quality would go up, but I would finish, uh, I, get, I got to a point where I would finish my work up to Tuesday on a Thursday morning. So every Thursday morning, my entire work until Tuesday was done. Now, the problem was that, you know, everyone was happy with the quality of my work. My manager was happy. My team was happy. But because of the way the company was structured and, and, and the culture, I still was expected to stay in until mm. 7 p.m. And I was like, no, I want to go in in all areas of my life. I want to go to a gym. I want to see friends. This is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm working to a really high standard because I want more for everyone. Um, but I felt that I was punished. Right. And, and that's the first time I kind of questioned the value of time. I was like, well, if, um, you're just paying me for to stay here and kind of change the color of this, uh, this, this spreadsheet for the next three hours, you know, what is the value of my time? And so that really made me think about things. And then when I started my first business after that, I think again, I, I did the classic sort of a startup entrepreneur thing to live the 25 hour day, which is when you try to stretch out <laughs> the day into the night and borrow as much time as you can from the next day. And the problem is that then you wake up tired and really directionless and you don't know what you're doing. You just try to do everything and scramble and, and, uh, and, and I really lived that until I was like, look, this is not working for me and I'm not getting the results that I want. So once again, that made me question, the value of time is like time, time has no value. It's what you do with that time mm. that creates any value. And so, um, those were the two extremes that, um, made me then rethink my thinking and build a different lifestyle and, 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 and a different kind of business around it, but also understand what I wanted. You know, very often we need these challenges because it's how we grow and it's how we understand what we want. Have you gone back yeah. into the corporate world to, to speak about this or do you focus only on entrepreneurs and business owners? Uh, at the moment, I only work with uh, with entrepreneurs and business owners, but it will be interesting to go back into like a big, uh, big corporation to talk about how I didn't work <laughs> during my Fridays and Fridays working from home. Out, out yeah. of interest, were you a management consultant? Or were you consultancy? Uh, yes. You were? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's why you were traveling around a lot. And uh... that's, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so for the listeners, I first heard about you through a mutual friend of ours, uh, Suraj. And uh, when he sent me your re reverse pyramid approach to productivity, and that's something I use a lot with our clients, uh, with weight training, you know, whereby you do your hardest set first and then you, you reduce the weight and you, you complete more work uh, thereafter. So how do you use that same reverse pyramid approach, uh, with your clients and, and for people who want to optimize, uh, their productivity? Yeah. So in this case, the, the reverse pyramid approach is very often, most people start from small tasks, small things um, that just feel good. It, it feels like you're getting some, some momentum and also your brain actually, it rewards you with, uh, um, with chemicals to say, well done, <laughs> you've actually accomplished something. And so you tend to do emails and small things that at the end of the day don't really get you anywhere. So, but if you reverse the pyramid and you start from you know, the bottom, the big things first, and you actually start from something that will get you closer to your goal, um, then your day is already great by 9am, 10am. So you don't have to justify a great day. It's already great. And then you can move on to your emails. And so that's a great way to prioritize what actually, what actually matters. And a great way to know that, a simple way to know that is to use your goals as a filter. So if you have a clear goal for yourself, for your business, maybe for your next stage in your business. So let's say that you want to launch a new product in three months right so and you have a measurable goal in other words you know how many units you want to sell or maybe how much money you want to make so once you have that goal very clear you can use it as a filter and ask yourself is this action i'm going to take going to get me closer to launching a product in three months mm -hmm. and selling x units if the answer is no or maybe then that's not where you should start your day from yeah it's a great objective filter to have and this doesn't apply only to uh, business as well. It's across the board, right? So if you have, yeah. for, for example, a lifestyle goal whereby, okay, I only want to work 20 hours a week, then I guess everything, that's not me, for example, let's just give me an example there. Uh, then, uh, you know, you might say to yourself, okay, I'm going to wake up and I need to do implement these systems in place or build these systems because I'll, that's what's going to take me to my goal. 
working yeah. on emails isn't going to take me to my goal. Is that the, is yeah. that the same concept? Yeah. It, yeah, exactly. It's like, it's really focusing on the things that um, will take you to the next level and the next lifestyle. And in, in a way, it's also important to live the way you would live once you have accomplished that goal. So it's, for example, mm-hmm. if we go back to like launching that product, your business is going to change then. And if you don't change kind of your thinking and your systems should support that in advance because otherwise it's not going to happen because of a mindset shift, but also to prepare, um, you know, the entire company for that change that is, you know, launching a product or any new big goal, big milestone is a big, is a big change. So it's important to not just wait for the result before having that change, but ease into that change so that the result is just a mere byproduct of your actions. Essentially proactive thinking. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. And a big part of that would be, uh, like you've talked about on a day to day basis, but a big part of that would be, um, you know, planning your week ahead. Uh, you know, yeah. on a Sunday or, or a Saturday or Sunday. And I know you're a big fan of a week map and you have templates of this on your website. Can you explain more why a week map is so critical for everyone, not just the uh, business owners? Yeah, absolutely. So I just think that, you know, here we go back to the kind of longer term. You know, we were talking earlier about shifting from the day to day to thinking ahead months, years, right? And that gives you that leeway to actually be in control of your time and make things happen. This is a similar concept. When you look at, you know, most people just go to the office or open their laptop and they just look at the next thing, which could be emails. And then the email is just a, a, an input saying, do this thing next. So it's very reactive. And again, having just, you know, being in the in the thick of it straight from, from the morning makes it very difficult to be intentional and get anywhere. But actually when you plan your week in advance and you kind of reconcile um, the event that you have on, it could be maybe you're going to travel for one day because you need to go to a conference or whatever that is, you know your day is shorter. Or you know that you know you need to get to a certain objective by the end of the week in order to hit your milestones. At that point, it becomes so much easier to say, okay, this is how I'm going to spread the volume, the volume of my work across the entire week to make sure that the important things actually happen. So instead of being reactive, you already set um, specific tasks and goals to each day. And the concept of a week map is that you create a structure around your week. So um, you can theme a few of your weeks, say, um, like, I like to take care of content, uh, of written content on a Monday. So that's, you know, a theme for me. For example, I coach on, on Thursdays. That's a theme for my day, right? And that means that I already know what happens on each day throughout my week, or at least most days throughout my week. And that makes it very easy because if a task comes in or I have to do something to get closer to the next objective, I know when I'm going to take care of it. But equally, I know when I'm not going to take care of it because I need to work on something else. And that makes it very, very easy to make significant progress all at once instead of having to switch all the time. So a week map is essentially knowing where the important things in your life and important things in your timeline fit throughout the week in those seven days. We all have seven days, but you know we don't all squeeze as much value out of it, the same amount of value out of it. Sure. And, and in the context of uh, body transformation, one thing we, we always encourage is to create non-negotiables uh, in advance mm. and, and schedule your training, your meal prep, uh, everything, or your cardio, all scheduled in your diary, on repeat, every week, at the start of the week, you know, you've, you've, you've got it blocked out so that if anything comes up or you you know, what's, if you've got events coming up, you can work around it. Yeah. What would you say to people who, who complain about uh, struggling, find, uh, finding the time to train and to do all of that, to do all of those things? Is it a case of, uh, you know, using something like a weekly meet, week map or do they need to uh, look deeper? I would say they need to look deeper. So, you know, a great misconception is that, it's time management time we, you cannot manage time time moves in one minute per minute you can manage yourself in relation to time in other words we, again we all have the same 24 hours so really if you if you say i don't have time for something what you're saying is it's not a priority for me other things are more important for me in those 24 hours and if that's your choice that's okay the problem is when people there's a disconnect between what they would like to do and actually what they end up doing. And that's uh, very often it's because of social pressure, maybe people pleasing, 
um, or just a disconnect between the general direction of their life and is not seeing, you know, if you have a very draining, um, if your career is very draining because you are disconnected to what you do every day, it will be more difficult to find the, the purpose and the energy to invest in yourself. So that's, you know, we go back to the sphere that when you grow everything at once, everything sustains itself, right? But when you just grow one area, then it becomes more difficult because it's in competition with everything else. So I'd say the, like that aligning and then look at your priorities. It's not saying I don't have the time is trying to blame something external so you don't have to look within and really understand mm. what the answer is. That's, that's, an, that's an important um important separation there looking looking within not blaming the external yeah yeah and one thing i would say as well is you know what you mentioned is having a meeting with yourself you know having put your workouts in in your calendar so usually we use our calendar just for things that we share with other people like this chat you know it, it was in my calendar right and it would be in most people's calendar but we don't think we usually don't put um an event just with ourselves just because we see our calendar as something that needs to um, to support and justify other people. But actually, no, it's your calendar. So if there is something that you want to do on uh, a Tuesday morning, maybe, um, you know, um, maybe you want to read for an hour every, every Tuesday morning, and that's fine. Just It's important that it's in your calendar or it won't happen. Otherwise, something else will come in and it will take that slot instead. So you were saying it's really important to have your workouts in the calendar. And I totally agree. And actually, I have, so in my my mornings, I have like a, a routine that I split in two. And, and, and part of it is I have one hour that I either spend working out or, or meditating, which is my mental workout. Okay. Um, so I have that as part of my... Yeah, it is in my calendar. It is a meeting with myself and I like to respect it. How do you meditate? Um, So at the moment, I'm a big fan. Okay, so I actually do two things, but at the moment, I'm a big fan of something called heart math. I don't know if you ever heard of it. I haven't, no. So we're going to geek out for a couple of minutes. Go ahead. ahead. (laughs) So so heart math is... uh, Heart math. Is is it heart math? Heart math. Heart math, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, without the S because it's uh, from America. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's a sensor that you clip to your, to your ear, to your earlobe, and uh, it measures your heart rate variability. Mm. Now, the, your heart rate variability is the difference between um, your heartbeat. So what is the difference in the time that passes between the, your heartbeats? Now, the higher your variability is, as a baseline, the better it is. So, you know, a high variability. So if you're, the distance between your heartbeats changes a lot, that's really good. It's a, it's a marker for great health. And you can increase that through reducing your stress, working out, you know, having, um, having a life that you enjoy. Um, but at the same time, when you compare it to your baseline, your variability gives you, it, it lets you know whether your, um, your nervous system is sympathetic so fight or flight or parasympathetic, so rest and digest. It's very useful if you work out as well to know when you can push harder, you should be pushing harder, when you should give your body some rest. Um, so what HeartMath does is it looks at your, your variability and a few other things. It looks at like uh, your heart waves um, and, uh, and what you do is you do a guided um, you do guided breathing and a guided meditation and you use visualization as well um, to slow down your heart waves, um, sync up your, your variability closer to your baseline, but also sync your heart waves and your brain waves. There's a, uh, there's a direct neural pathway between your brain and your heart. And we used to think it was just one way from the heart to the, to, from the brain to the heart, but it actually goes both ways. And whenever I meditate using heart math, um, it's, I, I can really feel um, a tangible difference in my creativity, my stress levels drop, I'm more productive, I feel happier. And actually because I measure, so that is my meditation and training, but because I also measure my nervous system and my variability, heart rate variability separately, there's a direct, uh, there's there's a direct impact on um, how my nervous system feels, how stressed I am. Um, And that's that's, that's like the techie, geeky way I, I, I meditate. And there's and then the the other way is more like um, mindfulness, and then there's uh, some some visualization around it as well. So when you're when you're doing heart math, what are you actually doing? Besides, you're measuring you're obviously measuring those waves, but what are you actually doing for the meditation aspect? Yes, yes. So um, I guess there are 
two main points i would say so one is the guided breathing so you just follow um a, a breath pacer and by slowing down your breath you uh, you can impact your heart rate and your variability and that's because um your breath is the only is the only window we have into the the autonomic nervous system the autonomic nervous system is is mostly automatic you can't stop your heart rate you can't increase it um you can't change your your your, your chemistry at will you can change it by what you eat but not at will um but your your breath is the only thing that is both is, is automatic but you can also access and so by doing that you affect the whole system so by uh, by following uh, that breath pacer you actually slow down your heart rate you calm down your your nervous system and everything gets in balance so that's one thing and then the other thing that you do is um you focus on positive uh, positive memories and um you can also think about people and you you imagine breathing into your heart and uh, what that does is it activates that the pathway between your brain and your heart and syncs the your heart waves with your brain waves. Um, and again, it's it's uh, it is all backed by by science and it's incredible the measurable impact and the from the, the the also the subjective impact it just a few minutes can have. So how long do you do for you do it for an hour? You said no. So uh, I. I do heart math two or three times a day. Um, oh, and that really depends. I do like maybe I would say 10 to 20 minutes every time. Um, and then, uh, so when I do my one hour meditation, we should only do like, um, two to three times a week. I started with that and then I move on to a different meditation, which is more like mindfulness. And there are some, um, some visualization, but it's all, uh, that, that is kind of centered around, um, changing my state, changing how I feel and like exploring some of my, my behaviors and then and my beliefs so that um, I can make sure that they are serving me. Yeah. What are the personal benefits you get from meditation? Yeah, I would say <laughs> I, I recently had this great quote that says that um, meditating is, is, is easy. You know, we can all sit on our, on our bum and, 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 uh, and, and, and breathe. Right. But it's what you do outside of meditation that, it, it, it's the real value from meditation. So it kind of teaches you how to be present uh, throughout your day. It teaches you how to be um, less stressed, more mindful. And what that means is, you know, whatever you do in your uh, in your present reality, it is more intentional. You are there instead of being your thoughts, instead of being kind of the victim of circumstances or your thoughts. You know that you are present. You are more in control of your thoughts and your actions. Um and instead of living, you know, we tend to, our brain tends to time travel all the time. We either think back on something that happened in the past or worry about something that might happen in the future or something that we want to make happen in the future. Now, a meditation is a great uh, training to actually be present in the only time we can influence, which is the present. It's where we can create the future. So um, it's that grounding uh, that is is important from from meditation. Then you can use it to explore a few things, like I was saying, exploring your, your beliefs and your and your behaviors throughout throughout the day. You can do that just by sort of visualizing yourself in different um, different experiences. Something I really like as well is if I want to change, you know, say um, say for example, I give a presentation and or give a, a a talk and it doesn't go as well as i wanted to well what i can do is i can visualize that while i meditate while I'm, my brain waves are in a slower um they they are slower um i can visualize that and i can kind of change that memory or in a way i can rehearse that in my mind and it's like giving three talks or three speeches um which means now i can learn without having to go through um those mistakes in real life it's like accelerated learning interesting i've always um I've always known of the benefits and I've heard from many people the benefits, but I've never got into it myself. I tried it for a couple of weeks a few years ago when I was using a Headspace app and I was doing it on my, probably was the wrong time, but I was doing it on my commute into, into London every morning and I kept falling asleep every time I, every time I did it. And I don't know if it was just cause I was tired or whether, you know, I lost that present moment, holding the present moment. And I wanted to try and get back into it, but, I find it quite overwhelming when I, you know, when I hear you say you do it for an hour or 10, 20 minutes, how do you, how do you make that first step? I know, I know the answer is going to be start by 30 seconds or, or a minute, but what kind of practical advice do you give to people who, who you think would really benefit from 
um, some meditation. Yeah. Well, in a way, it is what you just said. You know, the, the difference between zero and one is infinite. The difference between one and 100 is just 99, right? So if you meditate one minute a day, you the, the difference is infinite. If you meditate, you know, 60 minutes a day, the difference is just 59 more minutes. So just showing up is really important, uh, I would say. But then, you know, I like... I guess I like to quantify things. Yeah. So even in that, that's why I really like heart math because it gives me more meditation per minute, I feel. Um, and and then because I can sync up my state, it's easier for me to tap into those uh, uh, this visual, visualization and a mental rehearsal, which also made me think that there's a there's an interesting study um, uh, where they um, they took like two groups and had one group do doing, uh, so they were doing bicep, curls for two weeks and the other group they, they they just visualized doing bicep curls for the same two weeks and the group that visualized it had 30 percent around and i can't remember the exact number but it was around 30 percent the gains that the guys that actually did bicep curls had within the same time window which is incredible if you think about it wow. um so i heard something I think similar with dieting as well big, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There was a, there was another study, a similar study, with like playing playing the piano, and a group was uh, um, they were playing the piano for again, I can't remember how long. And the second group where they were they were visualizing playing 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 the piano, and um, their dexterity in uh, the movement of their fingers again changed to a similar uh, ratio as the the bicep curls, uh, which is incredible. And and again, if you can do that in your mind, even if you get thirty percent of the benefits, that's fine, as you can do it so much faster. And you can change some of your beliefs. Say, you know, you try to um, do something scary, which was maybe to pick up the phone and make a cold call, or maybe I don't know, you wanted to talk to someone in the streets, and you know, it didn't go how you wanted it to go, or you didn't do what you wanted to do. Well, just go back in your mind and change it. And you know you can learn from that almost as much as you can learn in the in in, in real life. So if I was to uh, start meditating tomorrow, what method would you advise me to do? Would it be a, a case of uh, simple breathing for for a minute, or do you have any other base, uh, basic beginner uh, advice? Yeah, I would say to start with, uh, guided breathing is uh, is great, and uh, it has been it has been demonstrated to have many many benefits. You know, we talked about it. So. Yeah. Lower stress, uh, lower stress, and uh, uh, faster recovery, and uh, you, you don't need a monitor to, to do that. You can do it, um, but you can also just download an app and find like a breath pacer, and just do that and just follow your breath. Um, and then you know over time, uh, in just by following your breath and having like a regular breath, that will change your state quite quickly. And then over time, if you want to experiment with different kinds of meditation. You can, but I think that that's a great basic foundation. Just follow your breath for maybe three to five minutes. And it's great as well to do it throughout the day. So if you have something creative, I like to take a short break and do that. Uh, well, I use heart math, but I would, if, if I didn't have that, I would use like a breath pacer just to um, slow down my nervous system and tap into that creativity um, and extra productivity. Yeah. Awesome. Are you a fan of uh, journaling? I'm a fan of journaling. The reason I ask yeah. is um, about a few months ago, I started journaling myself. I've always been an avid writer, um, but I, that's mainly for, for blogs and for, for, writes, for publishing online. But I never really spent time writing just for myself and you know, writing in, in, a, in a book with a pen anymore. So I started journaling and I've found um, it's become a habit now where I wake up every morning and I, and I do just five to 10 minutes of, of whatever comes to my mind. You know, mm. It's not a significant amount, but it's just become a habit that, it's almost automatic now. Uh, and I was wondering, I, I've been asking a lot of people like what their thoughts are on, if they have any tips on it and, and if they're fans of it. And Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, um, I used to be, I still I'm a big fan, but I no longer use it. Um, I used to really like the five minute journal, which is a, a gratitude journal with a few prompts for the morning and the evening. Now, what I like to do at the moment is I create my own prompts. So prompts are just questions that, uh, you answer just to create either the right thoughts or the right answers or, or, or ponder the right things about your day. Um, and I think that like, I can, I tend to change my prompts every quarter as I adjust my goals and I adjust what I want to learn. And, and that's really, it really works for, uh, for me because it allows me to look at the blind spots uh, of my day or what I could have done better. Um, but also journaling in general is so good because 
I feel that it, it takes your thoughts, especially recurring thoughts and problems and just puts them on paper and they're out of mind and you can just be done with them and, and, and deal with them on paper. And uh, it's just such a great way to gain awareness on what you want, what's important to you. You will start seeing patterns, you know, if you, if you keep using the same, if you keep using the same words or saying the same things, then you can see a pattern in your life. It's something you need to focus on. Um, so journaling absolutely is really, really important. If you don't mind me asking, what are your prompts that you're using right now? I see if I can remember them. I've obviously got them written down every morning. So one thing I do every morning and every evening as part of my journaling is I write my, my affirmations. So my affirmations are usually two things um, that are um, two symbolic um, goals, but I write them in the present tense. So I am, you know, something else. Uh, and... Uh, Science says don't share your goals too much. So that, yeah. that's why yeah, I don't want to share my current affirmations. Well, you know, that could um, that could increase the accountability of them. <laughs> well, Which we'll come on to in a bit. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um but yeah, some of the other ones are um how could I have made today even better? That's something I ask myself in the in the evening. You know, because it, it assumes that the day was good, but how could I have made it even better? Right. And it made it sometimes makes you think like, you know what? I slept in, I didn't put an alarm clock. And I'm like, okay, that tells me that I need to sleep. Mm. Or, or maybe just says, you know what, I did that thing that scared me instead of not doing it. I was like, okay, that stuck with me. So it means I need to focus on it. Um, I mean, in the morning, again, I'm a big fan of gratitude. In the morning, I just write, what well, are three things I'm grateful for? Um, and that's great, you know, because it just uh, it just puts uh, it just puts my brain in, in abundance mode instead of going like looking for trouble as it naturally would i just go like i am grateful for i don't know like uh last month uh the the tap in my kitchen broke so for a couple of days i had no tap in the kitchen also was spraying in the middle of the living room and um and it really made me think wow i'm i'm, I'm so grateful for having a tap a tap that brings fresh water to my flat every day mm. right and you can go like that you go i'm so grateful um, for the sunshine. It doesn't need to be big. It can be big. It can be small. It's just acknowledging those things that support your day every day. And it puts you in that receptive mode where, you know, we both were at that event the other day and there was a quote that I really liked, which was uh, uh, by Lord Bill Moria. And he was saying, um, luck needs determination because if you're not determined, luck will, uh, uh, luck will, will pass you by. So it comes in waves, yeah. but you won't even see it because you're not determined, right? And this is the same, like if you, if you put yourself in gratitude mode, you start seeing good things and you start seeing opportunities. And that's why I really like it. Amazing. So you've got the affirmations, uh, you've, which are your present tense goals. Um, yeah. And then you've got your, your what, how could you improve? And then your gratitude. Those are the way you kind of structure your journal. In the morning, I also have, what, what will I do that scares me today? Okay. Yeah, so I have, what are three things they're grateful for? What will I do this Christmas today? Then my affirmations. And then I in the evening, I have what are three amazing things I experienced today? And then how could I have made today even better? And then my affirmations. So this, and these change. I have a, a whole post on great um, on great journaling prompts I, um, I like to use. Oh, great. Like well, to, if you can send me that, I can put it in the show notes for people. Absolutely, because yeah. Because the way I do it at the moment is before bed, I just write down... Um, in a bed in the present tense, I say today I'm going to accomplish, and then I just put three things. So I try and have, you know, one real important one, and then two um, two other important ones. And two of them are usually business, and then one is usually kind of either something that's more day to day or just personal. Um, so for yeah. example, for today it was uh, it's actually after this podcast, which is we're recording at 10:30 a.m. I actually knocked out all my all three of my top three, which is great. So one of them was Amazing. one of them was to write a, a case study of a client uh, that's going out on Monday. The second one was to consolidate something for the team, um, a team of coaches, and the third was this podcast with uh, with you today. And in, in that order of um, of time as well, so it's worked out really nicely. So after this podcast, like I'm technically wow. done for the day. Uh, yeah, and then I can just move on to the day to day. You know, the day. I haven't even opened my email yet. I haven't even looked at my phone. So that all begins afterwards. So. Today's a successful day already, uh, but <laughs> I love that's, that, the, yeah. that's the way I've been doing it. In, in the evening, I say, today I'm going to accomplish, and I just put three. I, before, I was doing like five or six, and then I realized that when it, when it comes to the evening, I'm ticking them off. I couldn't get through them all. 
because I, I wrote all these like lists of goals to do each day and it was overwhelming with how many, how many things. So yeah. I dialed it right back to three. And sometimes I think three is too much as well. Um, yeah. So it typically around that. I think that will be the upper limit, right? Especially if you write them down. But what I would say is you can select those are either symbolic of something else. So, you, you know, a goal that if you achieve that, it means you have achieved another two, right? Mm. Um, or do something that would you know, would make it other ones a byproduct. Um, so kind of merge them that way. For example, it could have been, okay, create amazing content today. So that would have merged yeah. the podcast yeah. and the article. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Create two pieces of amazing content. Right? Okay. Got it. Yeah. And then what I do in the morning is when I wake up, uh, I just go free flow for about, uh, six to seven lines, maybe just for about five, mm, seven minutes and yeah. whatever comes to my head. And yeah. you, sometimes it's dream writing. Sometimes it's just like a problem I'm trying to solve. And I'm and just, you know, just ramble on about it. Uh, but nice. that's, the, that's what I've been doing anyway. And, and I, but I like the structure of yours and I might implement, uh, especially I like the affirmation. Yeah, I, I think that there's, there's a lot of value in like um, just uh, free writing, yeah. uh, free form. But at the same time, those prompts kind of help you. If you've got a certain direction, you know, maybe you want to have more discipline in your life, then you can ask yourself in the evening, what's one way I was disciplined today? And that will put like mm. a radar onto, you know, what you want to accomplish. So you can use these affirmations to make sure that you check in with yourself, but also set your day and, and, and learn from a pattern. That's, a, that's really good advice. And that's holding yourself, holding yourself accountable, which brings me on to, sure, to yeah. the next question, which is something we spoke about. Let's do it. We spoke about briefly on a Tuesday when we met at Suraj's entrepreneur uh, event, entrepreneur jam event. And <laughs> it's the concept of accountability letters. Now, this is something I've never come across before. And I've read a lot about accountability. <laughs> and a lot of what I do is, is around surrounding accountability. So when I read this, the first thing, I actually saw my mom like half an hour after I read this. And I told her all about it. I said to her, you need to try this accountability. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to know more about it first before, before I try it and, um, and start telling all our clients the right accountability letters. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, leave, yeah. I'll, let, I'll let, you, um, let you run with it. So I personally do this every year, though I should say I only started uh, two years ago. But, um, you know, you don't have to do it yearly. You can do it for a specific goal, whatever, right? But the idea is that, like, when you when you make a promise to yourself, it's easy to excuse yourself because you are the one that will have to excuse yourself whether it happens or not. And, you know, we go back to the, what we were saying earlier, that most people use their calendar for other people. And it's for the same reason. If you don't show up to your own meeting, you know you will be excused, right? But if you don't show up to someone else's meeting, that's not, you don't know if you will be excused, right? So it's the same thing when you set a, a goal or an objective or a promise to yourself, there's always, it's always that easy way out. And then the thing is as well is if you say, well, if this happens, uh, I can reward myself or maybe I will be intrinsically re rewarded by that happening. The problem with that is that if nothing happens, the illusion is that things will stay the same. Nothing will change. They will, it will stay like it is now, which is actually more comfortable than change. You know, we'd rather um, we'd rather be unhappy than uncertain. We don't like change, right? So we have all these things that um, that play against you. One, the fact that it's easy to excuse yourself. Two, the fact that if you actually make it happen, you'll have change to deal with. If you don't make it happen, the illusion is that things will, will stay the same. Mm. So... The idea of the accountability letter is that you write whatever you want to accomplish in um, sort of like a, a contract, <laughs> uh, a page form, which you print out. I like to print out and sign um, and and give it to, to a friend of mine together with a check. I use a check or something else. But it's uh, what, I, what I did last year. So, so every year I do this with three things. I choose three things, three actions in my control, really uncomfortable, that will make me change my thinking, my acting. Okay, so I choose three things, put them in this in this letter, and I give it to a friend. And last year what I did is I wrote a check um, to a party I don't support at all. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> can I, <laughs> you know, it was, it was a check to you, Kit. Okay, and, uh, yeah. This, this is not that... Um, and then uh, the and then I did it with another friend as well. And for the other friend, I gave them a flight voucher, which was addressed to a relative 
um, I didn't particularly want to see. And he was saying like, please let's travel together. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and together with the check, I gave a letter to UKIP and a letter to that relative and an envelope, you know, it's a positive letter. Yeah. And then an envelope with uh, the address and a stamp already on it. So all they have to do is a passive trigger. If I don't do what's on the letter, just made it. It's already, the check is there. The letter is there. The envelope is there. The stamp is there. You just have to made it. So now this friend of mine and these two friends of mine, actually, all they have to do is check in with me. If those three things don't happen, that letter is going um, to, you know, uh, to the organization I don't want to support with a lovely letter, a very positive letter from, from me as well. And so I was actually talking about this concept with a client this week and he was like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to write a check um, to fund the the wall between Mexico and the U S <laughs> and then I'm going to write in the letter that like, please put me in the list of, uh, of your, uh, of your supporters. And, uh, <laughs> and so that's, you got to hope that yeah. these friends that you're giving to are good friends of yours that you trust. <laughs> well, I got to hope that they're so, you know, the, the good friends were so good that they will not betray me, yeah. you know, cause some friends will go like, well, I'm a good friend. So I won't send it even if, yeah. but what I want yeah, is yeah, yeah, of course. less friendship, right? Of course. That it, it, you, you care about me so much, right? it doesn't, you know, you will do it anyway. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, but I think, you know, it's, it, it is important, um, who you surround yourself with. So I know I can trust them. And it worked? <laughs> yeah, it did work. It did work. How did Absolutely. you feel when you were doing, when you were, so you did quite a lengthy contract in that it was a year long. How, how, how often did it yeah. make you think about it? Yeah. So, I mean, right now, cause I did it for the current year as well. Um, I've got to say, I think about it. Mm, multiple times a week maybe okay, so it's scary enough three. to think about then yeah yeah and especially if i think like it the, the thing is it, it keeps the objective um you know at the front of my mind because i go like well that's there will be a punishment i can't forget about it and that's the most powerful thing about it you just go like this is important this is part of my life i need to um to work on it so, and i know that it's important i know it will always unlock something good so but just having that you know, if I, because otherwise if I fail, there's, I don't lose. It's either win or nothing. But in this case, it's either win or lose. Yeah. Are you putting lose. process goals or, or outcome goals? So for example, if for example, I, I did it for getting into shape, would it be a case of I'm going to be 10% body fat with the six pack or is it going to be, I'm going to train four times a week and stay in a calorie deficit for 12 weeks? It, it, Great. Which one is it going yeah. to be? So it'll be, closer to the second because it needs to be in your control yeah. it needs to be in your control right so there are some things that um you can you can influence by action you know that it will happen by you know sheer numbers um if you take that so but if it's an outcome it needs to be in your control it can't it can't depend on someone else or it can't depend on variables that you don't know so you know um in in the example that you the that you gave the second will be much better so i will do that stay in a calorie deficit and that's how i will control the 10 percent. but then i if i've never if, if i've never gone down to to 10 percent, i actually don't know what's going to take my body to get there mm. so you know what i do is i will focus on the on the system and then learn how to get there yeah. um yeah. so you're accountable to the system not the not the outcome yeah, because otherwise what you're doing is you are putting yourself in a tough spot where you depend on someone else. You know, say even if you say like, I want to 10x my business. Well, that depends on you, but it also depends on your customers. Yeah. It also depends on your team. And so, you know, but if you say like, I want to find, I don't know, X more customers, and you know that if you will contact a hundred people, you will find them. If you, if you know there's a system of that, then that's fine. If not, you know, but you, if not, just focus on yeah. the process and say, I will contact other people. Um, it's just that if it's at the same time, what you want to avoid is to um, paint yourself into a corner where you, the how is fixed. You know what I mean? So if there are multiple ways to get to that goal, you don't want to choose one where you don't know whether it's going to work out or not um, and be stuck with it. And if you move to another one, which is more efficient, then you're punished. You want to avoid that, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and no, I completely agree. And I think focusing on the process is the, is the best way uh, to go forwards and it, it just takes pressure off yourself as well mm. in your accountability yeah. letter are you including uh why it's important you, for you to get there and you connect yeah i do because on a deeper level and then are you relaying that message to your friends yeah yeah i do so i write it in that um 
that one page it's not one page for me it's more like a, a yeah. couple of paragraphs yeah. but and then send it i don't give it to my friends and yeah it does say like it will have an impact on my business it will have an impact on my thinking um so for example i, I can tell you a couple of examples from last Great, year yeah. um so one of them was to move to a new city i in in october i moved to to london uh and the other from one where? was Sorry, from where well i will okay. explain okay. that at some point <laughs> And the second, uh, and 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 the second point out of three, I can I can tell you all three of Go them ahead, actually. Yeah. The second point out of three was uh, um, I will work and travel remotely for at least one month of the year, and I did that for seven months last year. Wow. Um, and so I moved out of my flat in Manchester, and I spent you know I, I travel for seven months each month in a different city, a different country. I went to Portugal, Spain, um, to to Italy, Greece, and a few other places, and. Um, you know, well, at the same time, I was growing my my, my business. Um, I was meeting new people. My friends were, were visiting me. It was a great experience. And I put in a lot of work to get my business to that point. But there was still something missing for me to pull that trigger, for me to go, like, let's do it. And so I needed that extra push. Um, and so to answer your, your question, I was in Manchester. I went oh, traveling okay. and then I moved to, to London. And then the third point was um, to not, it was actually the opposite. It was to not travel, to not leave Greater Manchester for the entirety of Q1 because I felt like I needed to focus and to launch a new product and need to get stuff done. So that was important to me. And all those three things were forcing me to change my thinking, change my actions, and therefore changing the results that I got. So for example, going traveling for seven months, now it's part of something, it's something I, 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 I do regularly every year. I, I will do it for two or three months again later this year. But doing that for such an extended period of time meant that I had to change the way I acted in my business. How do I want to grow it? What's important to me? Who do I want to work with? And it changed a lot of my thinking in many different in many different areas of, 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 of my life. What is important to me? How do I want to train? What kind of um, diet principles are important to me? I want to keep with me throughout all these 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 countries. So I chose it not just because I wanted to travel, but because it had a, a, a massive impact, a, a ripple effect on many different areas of my life, many different um, many different applications of of my thinking. Um, yeah. Wow, that's that's huge, and that's why I want to I want to move on to that now. Like uh, you're, you're you're traveling for seven months of the year, growing your business. Tell me how. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, what, the the real question here is like you know. I, I, I travel a fair, a fair amount, but whenever I go away, it's more of a case of maintaining. You know, I, I'll put in the work in beforehand and then when I go away, I just think, okay, I'm going to maintain for now. How do you, how, what, what are you doing to, to create something that allows you to grow at the same time? Yeah. Well, I would say that, you know, in this case, I was abroad for uh, 200 days, over 200 days. Um, and what that means is that like, you know, if home was uh, was Porto in Portugal instead of London, that's when you would do uh, all your work, right? Yeah. So it's that mindset shift of going like, I am I'm traveling, but this is where I live. I'm here for a month. In fact, I stayed okay. one month in every city. Okay, you know, so you actually month. lived in each city. You didn't um, exactly. You, didn't, yeah. you weren't like moving every three days to another place. No, no. Okay. I lived in that city. I had a, a co working space, um, like a, a desk space where sure. I could go to. Um, and at the same time, what was really good is that at that point, because of the fact that you are in a different environment, if you want to have time off, you want to, I don't know, do something fun, it's so easy. Just go out, just do something. And it's great because it's new, because it's, you know, it's a new environment. And at the same time, if you want to do go on a sprint and, you know, like launch a new product or tweak a few things. And again, that's easy because you are immersed in uh, an environment which you you have created purposefully for that month. So it can be really good actually. Um, so that's how I did it. I spent like a month in a different city. I think that actually um, what I want to do this year is I want to spend a longer amount of time in each city, maybe two, three months in one okay. um, and do it that way. Cause uh, I really like the idea of like traveling as a local um, and kind of immersing myself, meeting local people, uh, learning a little bit of the language, being able to read, um, the street size in Greek or Bulgarian or whatever that is, because um, I think it's great. Again, it questions my thinking, which um, I clearly value. I said that a few times in, in the interview, but yeah. What's your country of origin, if you don't mind me asking? 
Yeah, so uh, I was born in, in, in Italy. My my family are originally from, from Italy, so am I. And uh, before moving to, to England. Oh, you were yeah. born, born in Italy as well. Whereabouts? I was born in Italy, yeah. In, in Milan. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, no, so when you go back to Italy, yeah. do, you, do you stay there? Uh, if so yeah, so my mum lives in uh, in Milan. So whenever I go there, I stay there for a few days. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. That's that's that's. It, it is funny because sometimes I use um, um, sort of phrasal verbs in English in Italian, and that that never works. Uh, so it it, it just. Uh, I remember once I was speaking to my aunt, whom I see maybe every couple of years, and I told her, I need to see some men. And she looked at me and she did. <laughs> I, said, I need to see some men. And she was like, why are you telling me? And, uh, <laughs> and what I was trying to say is I need to go to the gents, but I didn't know that that wouldn't translate quite as well. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Uh, so I, I assume that, you know, when, you're, when, you're, when you did your quarter one of focus, it was all about building systems that allowed you to travel. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and and you know, like I was saying earlier, it's uh, it's important to know what you want to accomplish through your goals and through your business, uh, but in general, through your goals in life. So, if you're building a business because you want a certain lifestyle, well, it's important that you engineer and live that lifestyle from the start, because otherwise, you will bring you will create a business that has some characteristics that may be in conflict with that lifestyle that you want mm. to build. And then it becomes very, very difficult to change that. Also because there's opportunity costs. You have built a, a branch of your business um, that, you know, it, that, that, that relies on those things and now you have to trim back and, and start something else or start something new. So it is important to, in, in the beginning, be uncompromising with your lifestyle. And sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it means it will take you a little bit longer. Sometimes it means that things will be a little bit more complicated because you only want to work with um, with, with people remotely or online or w- whatever your constraint is, but it pays off in, in, yeah. in the long run, many, many fold. Yeah. This, uh, this May, end of May, I've actually, uh, I booked a couple, so I'm going to Cambodia in the end of May and, I, and a few of the days are in a, I think three or four days are on an island with no Wi-Fi. Now this is like a, just the idea of it scares me because my whole business mm-hmm. is online, but it's forcing me to build, like I'm focusing so much attention on building everything now in place so that when I go there, I can I can be in peace for a few days and not actually worry about right. it. But I know the after effect is going to be enormously positive for yeah. me. I mean, if I can if I can pull that off, then everything is going to become so much easier in the business. And and it's almost a level of accountability that I've booked this I've booked this island, and I've also yeah. booked it on the days that I'm typically most busy as well, just to make it even more I tough for myself. So I know in the next like uh, four months, I've got I've got a lot of work to do to be able to just have those four days of, of not checking my email or, or anything, which is, it's going to be tough, but I think it's, a, it, it's the only way to really do it. Otherwise like, I'll yeah, never yeah. get to that point where I can kind of switch off. Yeah. And you know, once you do it, you know, you can repeat it, you know, you can do it again. Um, but, but it's the first time that feels scary. You know, same thing. Why I, I put the, the troubles in the accountability letter because it was like, you know, I build this system, which is kind of ready for me to travel. Yeah. But am I ready? You know, will I do it? And then, and then adjust. That's exactly. It. And 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 the thing is, when you take action, it doesn't matter. But when you take action, you can adjust because you get feedback. Is it working? Is it not? Right. But it's when you wait that there's, there's not much that is in your control. Yeah, it's amazing. Do you a fan of uh, productivity apps? And if so, what are your favorite ones? <laughs> So uh, I think I should give a, a caveat first, which is, you know, um, sometimes how you do things is not as important as the principle or the system uh, mm, behind it. Yeah. So an app that might work for me might not work for you, right? Um, and at the same time, it's it's easy to confuse the tool for for the action. You know, the, the, the classic example is say that, you know, it, yeah, let's take a podcast. Is I want to start a podcast. I'm going to buy a microphone. I'm going to buy the latest software and then not do anything, right? And in that case, you're confusing the tool for the action. You're thinking that like buying the microphone is getting you closer to having a podcast. Um, so I will give my favorite apps, but only... Go ahead, um, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I like, for calendar, I really like Fantastical. I don't know if you've ever heard I of that. No. Um, I really like Fantastical because because of the view is very clean, but also you can just... Uh, it's just, I just like the way it recognizes your, uh, either your voice or the way you type just to create the event. So you can say like a podcast, um, on, on Thursday at 10, 
uh, time zone New York, and we just put that in, in in the event. And I really like the view; that's really nice. Um, I like Brain FM. Brain FM mm. is is great. I've Shout out to them. So it's an app that gives you uh, AI generated music, so artificial intelligence generated music to increase your uh, your focus and concentration, or it could be to relax, it could be to sleep. Um, it's it's great. I really like it, and you give it feedback to say whether it works or not. So then it adjusts the next. Oh, okay, so that's that's the AI uh, system. Yeah. Okay, I was gonna I was yeah. gonna ask you what why is it AI? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that's that's. What do you what do you like. listen to when you try, uh, when you when you write or any you doing anything productive or creative? Yeah. So. Um, I tend to listen to a lot of music. So I really like Brain FM if I need to get in the zone. But because I listen to a lot of music, um, sometimes that kind of overrides uh, my Brain FM choice. Um, but yeah, I, I tend to listen <laughs> I listen to a lot of uh, trap rap uh, or piano music. Is it especially. trap rap when you're writing? Yeah. Yeah, really? but only if I know it. Because otherwise, if it's oh, a new yeah, album, yeah. that distracts me, right? But if it's not, and you know, mumble rap is yeah, a you're the same as me. That. Like so, <laughs> when I'm writing, uh, I listen to the same song on repeat. Uh, it's 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 um, Chopin Nocturnes. Um, yeah, I love that. And uh, number one in B flat minor, uh, I just put it on yeah. repeat. Uh, and it, for, for only when I do my creative writing, I don't listen to it any other time. And then when I do my um, like general tasks or my check in with clients, it's just like it's just hardcore rap. But it's like the, it's like slow rap. But it's just the same, again, it's the same song I just put on repeat. Because <laughs> I find if it's on repeat uh-huh. or an album is just on repeat, then I don't have to think about it. It's just it's just there in the background. And I'm just like humming along or whatever. <laughs> but it's yeah, not yeah, actually I requiring like brain power to listen to it. It's just there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did something similar. And it's cool. Like I was listening to Lang Lang Ch- uh, Chopin this uh this week as well. So that's uh that's cool. Yeah, good parallel. Yeah, and yeah. I think that with mumble rap, because you can't understand anything, it's not very <laughs> Oh, awesome. Um, yeah, you're going. So you had Brain, Brain FM, uh, Fantastic Cow, and one more? Yeah. One, one more. more for, uh, let's, let's go for, for one for that, that I'd, I'd like to know about. What do you use for your processes and systems? Uh, I use Trello. Trello. I use okay. Evernote as well, but Evernote is more where I keep say my journal, I keep my, I, I do like sketch notes, which is like visual note taking. I keep that in, uh, in, in Evernote, but Trello is where I have, Your tasks. Um, yeah, say my weekly, uh, weekly tasks and everything I plan in Trello. I'll be looking at Asana, but I think that's pretty similar to Trello. I think they're both, they're both very similar. Uh, I think they're based on a different principle. So okay. Asana is, is based on like, um, kind of projects and then tasks, whereas uh, Trello is based on the Kanban model. So the Kanban model, you move stuff across different stages. Um, so if you imagine like a few columns, each column is one stage and you just say, let's take, well, let's say writing a book, which is one of the things I'm using Trello for. And uh, you can just take one chapter, say chapter one, and you put it from like outlined, once it's outlined, then you can move on to drafting and then you can move on to editing. And you know that like it's in a different stage at any point. And also maybe there's a, there's different, a different ownership per stage. So for example, when I put it from drafting to editing, someone else takes over mm-hmm. and does the editing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What are you writing? So that's not the Kanban model. What book are you writing? Um, I'm 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 releasing I'm publishing my first book um at the end of the quarter. Oh and, really uh, really soon then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, really soon. What is it um, called? Well, share. I'm testing I'm testing okay. a few a few I'm testing a few. Is it based on few. your your general time zillionaire principles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean some of the names are, you know, how to invest your time or time rich. So we'll see what wins, but I definitely will test it doing some ads and some of that. But oh, very yeah, cool. this is a bit of a let's check that out. Uh, yeah. And it's out at the end of the quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. I'm organizing a bit of a launch with a few um, online brands, um, which, uh, yeah, should be fun. If there's a should link uh, that you have for us, I can, I'm happy to put it in the show notes for you. Yeah. If there's a pre launch link, I don't know if you've got anything. Download a free chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Send that over and I can, I can put that in the, the show notes. Amazing. Awesome. Uh, let's finish off on a, a quick rapid fire. Uh, what's the favorite country you visited? <laughs> Favorite country I visited. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay, I was I was scanning the 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 planet in in, in my mind, and uh, I don't know why, but what came to mind was China. I just think oh, wow. I was there for six weeks uh, when I was a student as a, a summer exchange student, and then I travelled a little bit, and 
it was just so much fun because it's it is just so different <laughs> and uh I, I just really enjoyed it so and i also enjoyed being in a situation where i was like a baby you know you have no language you can't read anything uh my my, my own address was written on a piece of paper and if i lost that you know i would have rather lost my passport than, wow. lose, than lose that so yeah yeah. Amazing. Um, what's the number one thing on your bucket list this year outside of you launching a book? Oh, um, on my bucket list. So it's an experience. Is that well, how experience we... or a big thing you want to knock off? Yeah. Go, let's go yeah, for experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go for experience. I want to go to South America. I've never been to South America. I want to go to Peru. So end of the year, that's what I want to do. Have you booked yeah. that in? You mentioned you're I'm doing traveling at the end of the year. Is that, is that what you're going to plan on doing? Uh, no, because there will be just a couple of weeks. Um, but I will probably chain it up to the longer, the longer one. Yeah. The, yeah. Awesome. Uh, who should we have on our podcast next? Okay. I think it'd be interesting to have, have you ever heard of Dan Pena? No, I haven't. No. You should have Dan Pena. Dan Pena is like a, um, how can I say a very vocal, um, 70 something old man. He trains twice a day. He lives in a castle in Scotland. And uh, he's just, um, yeah, he's just really motivational. But um, I think he's like, focuses a lot on like getting, taking action instead of like being in your head, in your head all the time. Um, and uh, I really like some of his content. So I think he'll be a fun chat to have him uh, talk to. Could you do him an introduction if you, if you know him? Yeah, I will, I will do an introduction. We've only spoken by email. I've never met him in real life, but I definitely... That'd be interesting. Yeah, I've never heard of him. And, and from the yeah, way yeah. you're smiling, I, I think it could be, could be interesting. Yeah, I think so. Uh, cool. So Matt, uh, tell the listeners where they can find you. Plug your socials, um, your website, etc. Yeah, absolutely. So the listeners can find me at timesinternet.com. They can also download, uh, join my free uh, seven-day course, Busy to Productive at busytoproductive.com. Um and they can find me on socials at Matt Sandrini. I'm on Twitter and Instagram uh, in waves, but I am there. And uh, I look forward to, well, one thing I would ask is if the, if you have one takeaway from this show, one thing that you will act, you know, do real action after this show, share it with me for some accountability. Tweet me at Matt Sandrini. Amazing. If you enjoyed today's episode with Matt, please share it with your family and friends. For more information, please visit www.rntfitness.com or follow us on Instagram at rnt underscore fitness or at Akash Thanks for listening.